ideas are not the challenge. The really hard part is to figure out how am I going to use that idea? How can I work it up and shape it up and really make a story out of it? Because, you know, ideas, they're kind of like a wild horse running across a mountainside in front of you. And you see that wild horse and you think, hmm, if I leave some food out, if I try to treat it kindly, maybe I'll be able to tame it. Maybe I'll be able to ride that horse or maybe even give rides to my friends. That's what happens. An idea goes by and you think, ooh, what can I do? How can I figure out how I'm going to tame that idea and make a story out of it? Sometimes you can't do it. There are lots of ideas that never end up being stories. But then sometimes the idea works for you and then you end up making a story. And most of the ideas I get come from old, old stories that people told to each other. They're called folk tales. Sometimes people tell me about them. Sometimes I read things that people from universities like folklorists and anthropologists have written down maybe even a hundred years ago. And then I get an idea from that and I start thinking about how I could share that idea with kids today, how I can use my own imagination to change the idea around a little bit, how I can use what I know about the people who originally told the story, and then also how I can put some of myself into the story. Because when you tell a story or you write a story, you're really sharing part of yourself. Now, I don't know that I have ever written or told a great story, but I have some ideas about what makes a good story. Remember, when you tell a story, you are sharing something. And you want to give sort of a feeling of warmth. It's like you're bringing people close to the fire. So when kids read a story I have written, or they listen to me tell the story, I want them to feel kind of like someone reached out and touched them in a nice way. So stories need to have that sort of warm feeling about them. And then also, stories need to get your imagination going. There needs to be something in the story that makes you stop and think a little bit differently. Or maybe see a picture you haven't created in your mind before. And also, stories have to have a little bit of humor in them. At least stories that I tell. I want people to chuckle a little bit or at least smile when I tell a story. Even if it's a scary story, I want to have a little bit of a smile someplace in the story. Those things all work together to make a story something you really want to share with other people. People often ask me if I'm planning on writing any other stories, and I have to explain to them I'm not really much of a planner. Right now I'm thinking, golly, my first book was published 35 years ago. That was a long time ago. Maybe I have already shared enough stories, but then you never know. I think, no, nah, I'm done sharing stories, but then I might run across a new idea. I might see something else I think I want to work with. And before you know it, I'm working on a new story. So don't be surprised. I may come out with two or three more books, or maybe I'll just settle back and be happy that I've been able to share the stories I've told so far. I can't tell you how many times kids have asked me which one of your stories is your favorite story. And I have to remind them, I tell stories, I write stories because I want to share something with other people. 
So when I find out that what I have shared appeals to other people, then it feels like my favorite thing. And I'm glad that I shared that story. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll go to a school. I'll bump into some kids in the hall. They'll say something like, our teacher read your story about a spoon for every bite. <laughs> that was a good story. Right then and there, I think, that's my favorite story. But then I bump into some other kids and they'll say, hey, we heard the story about the gum chewing rattlesnake. That's a good one. And I think, oh, that is my favorite story. And then I bump into some other kids and they talk about a different story. Maybe they'll even say, we heard the story about Grandpa's Hallelujah Ham Bone. That was fun. We laughed. And then I'll think, that's my favorite story. You know what? My favorite story can change four or five times in just one day. I love talking to kids about writing. Because when I was a kid, I lived in a small, small town. I never met an author. I never met anyone who had had a book published. And when people said to me, you should write some stories, I thought, how can I do that? I sat down. I heard myself telling the story in my mind, and I started writing the story. So that's what I'm always telling kids. Listen to yourself when you're writing. The biggest mistake people make when they write is that they don't listen to themselves. It always puzzles me. I know that everybody knows how to speak a sentence. But I've noticed a lot of people don't write sentences. No one ever told them, listen to yourself. If you listen to yourself, your writing gets better immediately. And when you're listening, see if you can hear a rhythm to the words. They should go up and down like the waves of the ocean. Then when people read it, they're going to feel that rhythm. It's going to carry them along. That's going to make it fun for them to read. Another thing I like to say about writing is this. If you really want to say what you mean, it's easier to do it in writing than in talking. I'll bet you've had an experience like this. Some kid makes a smart remark at you. You say something back to that kid. But later on, you start thinking about it. And you say to yourself, Ooh, I know what I should have said to that kid. I wish I had said that. Everyone's had an experience like that. You know what? When you write, you get to say things in your I wish I had said way because you can revise writing. Teachers are always telling me that kids don't want to revise their writing. And that's because kids don't realize that when you revise, that's when you really start to say what you want to say. The best part of writing is revising. I got to say one more thing about writing. If you want to be a writer, you have to be a reader. There's no way to be a good writer if you don't read. That's the way language works. When you're born, you can't talk. If nobody ever talks to you, you'll never learn how to talk. If you don't read, you're not going to learn how to write. When you read other writers and you see how they say something, then you get inspired and you think, oh, I'm going to use ideas like that and put them into my writing. Read every day and your writing is going to get better and better every single day.